Chapter 4 The Best Food Choices for the Diet When choosing foods for the green smoothie cleanse, there are some that outshine the rest. Here we'll go over the best foods to have, including a little bit on which ones are the best in each section. This will include why as well. Greens. Let's first and foremost talk about greens. This will include the main greens that you should be having. First, you should have kale since it's one of the best leafy greens. This green plant has a lot of vitamins C, A, folate, fiber, calcium, and potassium, which is great for cancer prevention and heart health. Next on the list is collard greens. These are virtually similar to kale and should be used as well as a base for your smoothies as well. Turnip greens are good too. They have vitamins C, A, and K, and calcium, and typically are very few in calories. Broccoli is another one as well. It contains vitamin C and A as well, but also folate, protein, iron, and even fiber and potassium. But along with that, it contains sulforaphanine, which is a cancer-fighting agent. Swiss chard is another good one. This is a soft green plant that contains a beet-like taste to it as well. This is another healthy dose of vitamins A and C. Spinach is not just something like Popeye likes, but also a great one too to include in smoothies. Not only does it contain vitamins C, A, and folate like many others on the list, it's actually better in smoothies than others. That's because it's better for you when eaten raw than cooked, and even when blended, it's good. Mustard greens are another since they're familiar to collard greens and turnips too. Finally, there is cabbage, which is really good because it can be fermented for added alkaline benefits. But cabbage in general is good for cancer-fighting properties in this, and also has a ton of vitamin C in them. Leafy greens are pretty much the base of a lot of your smoothies. Fenugreek is another good one, and if you add a touch to it into your smoothies, it can pack a punch. Most of your green smoothies will involve these, so definitely good options all around when choosing the base of your smoothies. Fruits. Fruits are good in all kinds of smoothies for a variety of reasons. That's because they provide a sweet taste to the green smoothies, so it can make them taste better too. But they also contain lots of vitamins and minerals, mostly vitamin C, and they contain healthy carbs. With fruits, you want ones that are lower on the glycemic index that contain antioxidants as well. Some of the best fruits to incorporate include apples, currants, figs, papayas, peaches, pears, limes, prickly pears, soursop, cantaloupe, dates, elderberries, berries of all kinds, coconuts, plums, mangoes, seeded melons of different kinds. Fruits are amazing for providing ample hydration and they typically don't have an overabundance of carbs. Berries are considered a superfood as well, since when added to smoothies do provide antioxidants that can fight free radicals and improve bodily health as well. Veggies. We did mention greens earlier, but veggies also are really good for pretty much any smoothie. Veggies provide other amazing benefits including VB vitamins, fiber and vitamins A, C and K2. With veggies, these aren't necessarily greens, but when combined with greens, they make a great smoothie. Lettuce is a good one to start with, but ideally you should choose anything but iceberg lettuce. Iceberg lettuce has almost no nutritional value to it. With mushrooms, you want all but shiitake mushrooms, since shiitake mushrooms are more acidic. While they do have B vitamins and minerals, the acidic nature of this does impact it. Finally, with tomatoes, you want to avoid cherry. That's because cherry tomatoes tend to be high in sugars and can impact the nutritional health of the body, since they're more acidic than the other counterparts. The best veggies to incorporate in your green smoothie cleanse include the following. All bell peppers, chickpeas, dandelions, okra, sea vegetables, zucchini, avocados, cactus flower, cucumber, olives, squash. 
If you can find dark green veggies to add to this, I do recommend incorporating those into there as well. Herbs. Herbs are pretty good for pretty much any green smoothie diet. However, the best way to have herbs on a green smoothie diet is through teas. That's because they don't normally translate well into smoothies and can taste a bit awkward too. The best herbs to consume include chamomile, burdock, raspberry, elderberry, fennel, ginger, tilla. With these, you might want to consult your doctor before consuming them. Elderberry is incredibly good for you, but sometimes a little too strong for some people, so you should make sure that you can safely consume this before having it. Nuts and seeds. Nuts and seeds are a big part of the healthy fats that you consume. The same goes for oils, since you want to consume coconut or avocado oil, or even olive and hemp seed oil. You want to make sure that these nuts and seeds aren't cooked in the least, since it does impact the nutritional content. Adding these to a smoothie does offer more calories, but also higher fat, and may be good to keep you full and satisfied. The best nuts and seeds for the green smoothie diet include hemp seeds, Brazil nuts, sesame seeds, walnuts, tahini butter. If you want to have grains, you need natural grains. You should not consume any grains that are processed, and you shouldn't consume any grains that contain either baking powder or yeast. The best grains include fanyo, corazon wheat, wild rice, quinoa, teff, amaranth, spelt. Typically, on the alkaline green smoothie diet, you shouldn't be consuming grains. But if you're doing to do the full Dr. Sebi diet, this may be something to consider. Spices. Spices along with herbs are really good. They can make things a whole lot more flavorful, which helps make things interesting, especially if you're consuming the same things day in and day out. Plus, there are spices and herbs that will also classify as spices. Thyme, spearmint, sage, parsley, mint, and cilantro are all examples of leafy greens that also apply as spices and herbs. Adding these as a little supplement to your smoothie will offer more of a taste. While it may not be the full plant itself, this does impact the taste and can offer a variety of different health benefits as well. The best spices to flavor your smoothies include basil, oregano, sweet basil, cayenne pepper, tarragon, achote, dill, cloves, onion powder, garlic powder, sea salt, granulated seaweed, date sugar, agave syrup. If you want something that offers a little bit of a sweet touch to your smoothies, then you should definitely consider the last two. What else can I have? Ultimately, that depends how much of the cleanse you're doing. If you plan to eat foods as well, you can of course have cereals and grains, so long as it's the one of the ones listed. You can have these foods not in smoothie form as well. Ideally, you want to make sure that you limit some of the fruits on this list, including blueberries and blackberries, since they are quite acidic. They are good for you though. You just can't only have those foods. You can also consume tea as well. Tea is good if you want something that's not a smoothie that offers a variety of health benefits. Ultimately, if it fits in a green smoothie, it's good for you. And on the Dr. Sebi green smoothie cleanse, you want to have these foods since they create an alkalized body and provide many health benefits as well. Chapter 5. Foods to Avoid We went over the foods that you should have, but what should you avoid? Let's talk about this here and we'll go over why. If you're doing the green smoothie cleanse and even just healthy alkaline eating in general, you should avoid these foods. Meats, including seafood. Meats and seafood generally are good for you, except the problem is they're very acidic. These foods tend to be higher in acid than other protein-rich options. Plus, as we said, this is a plant-based diet, so any meat products are going to have to go. But it's more than just that. 
the meats you consume tend to be enriched with hormones and other chemicals, which impacts how good it is for the body, and also can impact the pH of the body as well. Some people, if they're just doing a more alkaline diet, may not totally forgo meats initially, but they'll slowly phase them out. You might wonder if seafood is included, and it is. That's because seafood, despite the health benefits, oftentimes are incredibly acidic and do prevent the body from being properly alkaline. Plus, with this diet, you want to be smoothie focused, and meats typically don't do that. With seafood as well, even if it is fresh, unless it's caught in the wild, it does have its own hormones and chemicals, so it should be avoided as well. Fortified food. Fortified foods may seem like a good option, but the problem is they actually aren't that good for you. These are foods that were introduced less than 100 years ago, with the intention to improve vitamin and mineral consumption in both kids and adults. While these have been successful in the U.S., the problem is they're too fortified in a lot of cases. This can cause an overconsumption of certain fat-soluble vitamins, which can potentially be life-threatening. It also can cause birth defects in pregnant women if it's too much vitamin A. Vitamin A also leads to hip fractures in older people, and can even just bit a bit of fortified food can cause an overconsumption. There is also the fact that most of the foods that are fortified tend to be unhealthy acidic foods that you're already eating, and they're not a substitute for healthy fruits and vegetables at the end of the day. While fortified milk may seem like a good option, it really isn't, and oftentimes can cause more trouble than one believes. The best way to consume the vitamins you need is through the foods themselves, and a supplement to make up for any missing parts to this as well. Packaged and processed foods. Packaged and processed foods are kind of an obvious one, but they don't belong anywhere on the green smoothie diet. For starters, this is all processed, injected with chemicals to make up for being nutrient deficient, and is also jam-packed with carbs, sugars, fats, and a whole lot of gross stuff. If you have packaged foods, chances are you're eating empty calories with no nutritional value. They are usually very acidic compared to other foods, and they do more harm than good. They're responsible for obesity in most cases since it's loaded with fats and carbs. It's also responsible for diabetes since most of these foods contain so much more than the recommended amounts of sugars you should be having. While it might seem right to get that cookie or candy, it isn't going to offer health benefits and it's better if you just eat the healthy foods that contain vitamins and minerals without the artificial injection of carbs and sugars. Plus, these are oftentimes so carb rich that you're hungry moments later. On a green smoothie cleanse, these foods don't do anything to help you and instead will cause more trouble than they're worth down the road. Remember, you want to consume natural foods when doing the green smoothie cleanse. These aren't natural and won't offer health benefits that you want, nor will it properly detox the body. Convenience food. This is kind of like the last few points that were mentioned here all combined into one. Part of the reason why the obesity epidemic is still in full swing is due to these convenience foods. By convenience foods, we mean fast food, convenience store meals, and essentially anything that's easy to eat. Sure, it's easy, but the problem with convenience food is that there's practically no nutrition on it. It's also loaded with carbs and sugars, creating acidic foods that won't give you a healthy body. Convenience food is usually very calorie dense. The problem with this is that it doesn't offer the nutritional value that you want to have as well. Plus, these tons of sugars in convenience store foods. It also contains chemicals as well, injected into the foods to preserve the freshness. When eating a fresh diet, hearing about all of this probably isn't what you want to hear. It's empty calories, carb loaded, and also doesn't contain the nutritional benefits that you want from your foods. Avoid these convenient foods if you can.
Just because something is convenient doesn't mean that it's good for you. So make sure you avoid eating these when doing the cleanse. And it's something you should actively try to get out of your diet in general. It's just empty calories and there's very little nutritional value other than sugars and fats, which puts you at risk for diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease too. Canned foods. Canned foods might be an option for some when doing a green smoothie cleanse. After all, canned vegetables means that there's still greens you can have on the diet, right? That's where you're wrong. The problem with canned foods isn't the fruits and veggies themselves, but the process of canning. Most canning, especially grocery store food, is done in containers where a bunch of chemicals and sugars are injected into each one. This is pumped with sugars and carbs, and oftentimes, the nutritional value is completely wiped from these foods. In some cases, too, the nutritional elements might be cooked out of the foods when they were fresh, and then when you eat it from a canned container, you're just getting food with not as much nutritional value as well. Plus, with all the additives and preservatives in this, there is a strong chance that this will be ruined because it will contain a lot of acids. Canned food might seem like an option for some, but the problem with it is the same as convenience foods. It contains a whole lot of bad things and very little good things. This doesn't just include canned fruits and veggies either. Canned meats and seafood also fall into this. They use plenty of salt to keep their freshness in that case, and that much salt does put you at risk for hypertension. When it comes to fruits and veggies, you're much better off using the healthy, natural versions and consuming raw veggies and fruits. You should start to get rid of canned foods, especially if you had a lot of these in your vicinity already. Dairy. Dairy, especially milk, should not be consumed on the green smoothie cleanse either. Milk is oftentimes fortified with added sugars and nutrients into it, so you might end up overconsuming various vitamins if you consume dairy. Not only that, but the added sugars can also impact your diet in this case too. But what about what dairy does to the body? In a lot of cases, dairy will impact the acidity of the body as well. Dairy is acidic since milk has a low pH just like yogurt does. While there are some benefits to yogurt and milk, especially with probiotics, you're better off getting your probiotics from other foods as well. Milk is too acidic to properly be on the green smoothie cleanse. Is there an option for this? Yes. Non-dairy milks and yogurts are a valid option. For example, nut milk such as almond milk is a good alternative. You also might want to consider a yogurt that doesn't use cow's milk either. You should consume dairy because of how acidic it is. But in a lot of cases, if you use an alternative, you'll be fine. These are the main foods that you should avoid during the green smoothie cleanse. It's a lot of them. But if you think about it, the lion's share of them are processed foods with added sugars and carbs. When you eliminate that, you'll notice the changes right away. Changing your diet will change how you feel, so getting rid of the bad so you can have delicious fruits and veggies is ultimately the way to go.